I got it. Good morning, everyone. Please come on in, have a seat. We'll get started. Let's take, in pr let's take an open in prayer here, if you would bow with me. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we would invite your presence here today with us in our service. Lord, we want to lift your name on high. You have a name that's worthy to be praised. And uh, so, Lord, as we sing, as we worship, as we pray, we just do everything in your name, to your glory, in your name, amen. Please stand and join me as we sing here. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Oh. Let it rise, let the songs, let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the joy of the King rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, 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 oh. Let it rise. Oh, 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 let it rise. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening, praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, praise you every season of the soul. If we could see how much you're worth your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise you in the heavens, joining with the angels, praising you forever and a day. Praise you on the earth now, joining with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, let everything that, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Welcome to church, everyone. Uh, Pastor Phil, if you don't already know, Pastor Phil is away. He's visiting our summer friends, Bud and Pam, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. So, uh... 
I'm going to be leading the service along with Ferris Harris, and we're glad that you're here. Nice to see everyone. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to be, you were the king of kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were, and now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join them as we sing glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Creator God, you gave me breath so I could praise your great and matchless name all my days all my days so let my whole life be a blazing offering a life that shouts and sings the greatness of our king glory to god glory to god glory to god forever Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory take my life and let it be yours and we sing glory to god glory to god glory to god forever runs 
out on me, you love. In death, in life, I'm confident and covered by the power of your great love. My debt is paid. There's nothing that can separate my heart from your great love. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love never fails, it never gives up, it never runs out on me. Your love. You may be seated, everyone. Good morning. Would you read with me page 1188? From the Word of God, our, our authority and our only authority. For it is declared, you are a prince, pr priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The former regulation is set aside because it was weak and useless, for the law made nothing perfect, and better hope is introduced by which we draw near to God. And it was not without an oath. Others became priests without any oath, but, it became, but he became a priest with an oath when God said to him, the Lord has sworn and will not change his mind. You are a priest forever. Because of this oath, Jesus had been become the guarantee of a better covenant. Now there have been many of those priests since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest meets our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, exalted above the heavens. Unlike the other high priest, he does not need to offer sacrifices day after day, first for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He sacrificed their sins once and for all when he offered himself. For the law appoints a high priest's men who are weak, but the oath which came after the law appointed the son who has made perfect, been made perfect forever. You know, when I was asked to pray, I realized with Baptists, you get all different kinds of prayers from people. I grew up in the Methodist church and I knew what was going to happen next. Every time we read the responsive reading in the back, and when I was a little girl, I found, well, when I was older, I found a note my mother had kept. We had had a fight, and uh, I never really usually fought with my mother, but I wrote this note to her, and at her death, I went through all of her stuff, and it said, it was third grade, dear mother, please forgive me and let us make an everlasting covenant. Because that's what we read, those, those things in the back of the responsive reading in our church. And I'm sure if you have another background, 
maybe Catholic, you remember certain things that come to your mind when you pray. And when people come up here and pray, they pray from their hearts, from their backgrounds. And I'm going to ask you for a quote that somebody said. Can any, does anybody know who said this? Life is like a box of chocolates. Who? Absolutely. And you know, you never, when you go to church, we use the kids in our church, I was thinking about them because they're so precious. When we get to this part, do they relax and think about something else or do they think about praying? So I want everybody to look under your pew and see if you can find something, especially kids. Look under your pew where you're sitting. Look under your seat. Well, the one that is supposed to be looking isn't looking. I hit it. And there is a, there's a girl here who isn't looking under her seat. Oh, you did. You found it. A, bo a box of chocolates. I think that once in a while, it's good. Jesus always surprised people when he prayed. They never knew what was coming next. And like the everlasting covenant and the box of chocolates, I just want to pray this morning and my daughter-in-law, my, da my granddaughter, goes to a Baptist church north from here to school. And so the pastor one day, before we had got situated here in our wonderful York Street Baptist Church, we went up there, and he said he came from the south, and he was establishing churches up here. But he said, you know, I don't notice the enthusiasm. I can just count on it that some people are going to go to sleep and some people are going to just not participate. So he said, I will, I am going to ask you if uh, you can participate this morning. Unbeknowings to us, he had gotten together with the young people. So when he started to pray, uh, when he started to preach, a sign went up. It said, praise the Lord. And then after he said something else good, it said, amen, amen. He said, now this is because you're maniac, maniacs. You're not used to saying these things in church. So we have some signs. So the more he preached, hallelujah, sign went up. Another one up here, praise the Lord. They couldn't say it yet, but they could put the sign up. Now we've gotten further than that in this church. So I'm going to ask you this morning as I pray, don't hesitate to say amen. You know I'm an amener. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, God. Let's just, you know, do it a little bit more, okay? Oh, God. Yes. Thank you, God, that you're here. Thank you we have this wonderful church with a, a fine pastor and his wife who love people and most of all love you. Thank you for this congregation. Although we're kind of small, we love each other because it's your love that has come into our hearts. And you're filling us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, we are like a box of chocolates. We're all kind of different. But Lord, thank God we even have people who have a different color of skin, like Sharon, who's here with us now. Praise the Lord for Sharon. God's get, amen. God's given her a place to live. We prayed for that. And you did it. Now, Lord, there's many things on our hearts. And we hate to see Ken and his wife have to go south. But we want you to put your holy hand on uh, his wife, dear wife, and, and himself. Bless his ministry and their ministry down there. And we pray for healing of her body, Lord. We just pray you'll protect her with them, with your mighty angels as they head south. And we thank you what a precious addition they are to our church. Amen. Amen. Oh, I love it. And dear God, we thank you for our new president, that he's a pro-life president. And Mr. Pence, who's standing by him, is a Holy Spirit-filled man. 
we pray, yes, and we pray for protection this morning. You've told us we should pray for our rulers and those whom God has put appointed over us. And we pray and thank you that they have made a special clause that the persecuted Christians will be the first who are allowed into our country. What a miracle. Thank you, God. Be with us in this service with the loving faces that we see here and with our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Jerry and Jenny. Men, if you would come forward. I've got to correct Dave on something. I'm not leading the service. <laughs> the deacons are. And I'm, I didn't know how many were going to be here. We have more than I was expecting, thankfully. Charles, if you're looking for something to do, I can give you something to do, but you're the only one that doesn't have something. So, come on, come on forward, men. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you give us as a church. Thank you for the, those that give, and we just pray that you would bless these gifts, that we would use them to glorify you as a church. Thank you for your love for us and all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We could have the announcements. I'm going to try to see them from here. Um, and Karen and, and Rick, if you would start headed up this way, that would be great. We have two adult Sunday school classes, uh, but probably only one today. I don't think anybody's filling in for Phil. Uh, so Riel is continuing his class in Gove Hall. And of course, we have uh, kids' Sunday school classes as well. Uh, apparently, the baby bottle drive, where we, we give you the, uh, the bottles to fill up with change. Well, what's the, what's, the, what's the group name in Dover that? Oh, yeah. Thank you. It is in the bulletin uh, for <laughs> options for pregnancy and sexual health resources, and they do a tremendous work over there. So I'm sure you'll be hearing more on that. Small groups are starting up. There'll be sign-up. Karen has an has a announcement on that with a video to go with it. First, um, a small group ladies study is starting up. Mic. Armor of God, if you saw the War Room movie, this is a great follow-up by Priscilla Shiver at seven weeks. Um, we're gonna be meeting Tuesday mornings at 9.30 in Gove Hall, and um, Lydia and I are facilitating it. Um, so I have a book if you wanna look at it in Gove Hall, and a couple flyers if you wanna invite a friend. And so you wanna run the promo. Hi, I'm Priscilla, and I wanted to take an opportunity to invite you personally to join me for a seven-session Bible study on the armor of God. We'll dive deeply into what it means to be equipped to stand firm against the schemes of the enemy. He is very real, and he has been so strategic and targeted in his attacks against us. Why shouldn't we be equally strategic and targeted in standing firm against him? And you and I have an opportunity to suit up to put on some armor that works and to go to battle and to see victory declared in our lives and in the lives of those people that we love. This Bible study will be one that will change our lives forever and will help us to walk in victory. So plan to join me, won't you? The Armor of God. So you can sign up for small groups right after the service over here in Gove Hall and look forward to having you participate in that. Thank you, Karen. Um, Wednesday nights we have a uh, evening activities. What are we eating this week? Chili, chili and nachos. And we have the the youth activities and prayer meeting. It's a blessing to blessing to many. Look forward to seeing you on that. Uh, Thursday evenings is uh, women in the word. Rick, why don't you come on up? That's uh, that small group is continuing reading through the Bible. Rick has a has a an announcement on uh, Romney. Good morning. Back at our October quarterly meeting, uh, the congregation voted to allow the executive board to market and sell the Rumney Cottage. Now, uh, I'm sure most of you know that we have a cottage way up north, I say way up north, in, uh, beyond Plymouth, New Hampshire, 
uh, in the foothills of the White Mountains. And uh, we've had it for a number of years, and it, it hasn't been um, cost effective to keep it anymore. It's, it's really costing us uh, money each year to try to maintain it and keep it going. So what we are going to do is we are going to uh, open up the sale process to the congregation first. We're going to do a sealed bid type of an auction. Um, I have a packet here. They're going to be available with Karen down in the office, or you can see the pastor or myself, we can get these for you. Um, this includes the explanation of the bid process. It has a bid form to fill out. It has copies of the deeds, the tax maps, property tax cards, uh, and some information about uh, the Romney Cottage in this packet. Okay, you have until March 14th, I believe it is, our uh, March executive board meeting to get these back to us. Uh, we will open them up at that time. Uh, you just want to, you don't want to, you want to put it in an envelope, seal the envelope up, and so that nobody else can see it. Um, we are authorized to accept bids over $30,000. Uh, you'll see the information in, again in the, in the bid packet. Um, and we also have the right to refuse any and all bids if we feel that they are coming in too low. So if you have any questions about that, you can see me, um, and I will be glad to explain it to you. These will be available today down in the church office. Thanks, Eric. Good. We encourage you to bid early and often. Uh, Race car rally, February 11th. The kids were making the cars here a week or so ago and uh, working on those. Uh, it's a great time to, to do that. It's a 3 p.m. start this year. We eating afterwards? Eating during. During. Yeah. During. Be nice. And, uh, <laughs> Briefly. Courageous Grandparenting is event coming up is uh, February 25th. Uh, we've got these postcards we're going to give you have, you, have available for you. Encourage you to take them with you and give them, give them to your neighbor, your, your family, your friends, uh, whoever, and encourage them to come. It, uh, it, we're looking forward to that. And uh, if, Even if you're not a grandparent, if you hope to be a grandparent someday, how will you pass your legacy over to your grandchild as a Christian? What will they be seeing? How will, how will you as a grandparent affect their lives? It's, uh, it's really looking forward to that, this event. And uh, the apologetics coming up in March, uh, you'll hear more about that, but that's on March 25th and 26th. Uh, today's message will be brought by Dave King. We've had him before. We'll, we'll see him in a little bit. I think that's it on those. Don, please come and talk about missions. Good morning. How many people live in Ireland? Huh? It's about four and a half million people. And I'd like to go back a little bit. A couple years ago, uh, there were three of us that went to uh, Ireland to uh, do some preliminary work. We met some people, we got some names. And if you remember, just a couple weeks ago, we had a Irish supper. You folks made uh, some delicious meals that had Irish recipes pro primarily provided by Donna Boardman. It was great. Um, why do we mention, why am I talking about Ireland? Ireland has the least reached number of English-speaking 
evangelical Christians. And for the last couple of years, we've been focusing on Ireland to uh, reach them to have our church get more involved. You see that uh, on the upper left-hand side is Ireland. It's the western part of Ireland that we are focusing on right now. And the next slide shows <coughs> where there are two groups. One in red is from World Venture. The other one in green is Calvary Mission. Dave Fountain and Pastor Phil will be going to Ireland February 5th through the 10th. That's right around the corner. And they are going to go and talk to some of the folks that we have been Skyping and emailing and talking to on the phone. The next slide shows the Yurks. The Yurks were here just a short time ago. Jeff and Ann and Jade. Uh, they used to be missionaries in Alaska. They are now missionaries where we are going and Phil and Dave will actually talk and visit with them. The next slide shows a church that uh, uh, was just started in Claire Morris. Dave and Pastor Phil will be with them getting to know the pastor and some of the members of the church that is just starting. Uh, the next slide shows some water, the shore is similar to York Beach. Uh, the top shows Westport, the other one is Sligo. We're wondering if uh, sometime in the future could Dave and some others uh, on a short-term trip with some uh, youth go over there and maybe witness and share with them. And the last slide shows Galway. Galway is nearby. It has 80,000 folks. And this would be another town that uh, Pastor Dave, pa Pastor Dave, Pastor Phil, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Dave. Uh, Dave and Pastor Phil will be visiting. And uh, we're going to have a prayer for their safe journey and other things. Okay, let's pray. Father, you have said, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. Father, open this path. Open the way for Dave and Pastor Phil to connect with the right people, to sense the needs that are there. God, and the people that need you, the people that are crying out and don't even know it in their hearts, and they be reached, maybe they be touched. I pray this trip would really bring some revelation into uh, Dave and Pastor's heart and us as a uh, congregation and the things that we could do there as a ministry. I pray that you'd put your hands under that plane and keep them safe. I ask that all the appointments would be godly appointments by you, Lord, that this would be a trip that would bring you glory and honor and please you greatly. I just hand this completely over to you. And I also, just to put in there, ask you to keep Andrew safe and to bless him too and give him wisdom as he ministers down there in South America and uh, bring him back to us safely too. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. And we have a request. Oh, we do? Yes, we have a request. <laughs> For um, Dave... And Pastor Phil to go, uh, there are some finances involved. And we do have a need that still exists for Dave. Dave uh, needs some more funding uh, to go. And those that have envelopes, that use envelopes uh, at this church, if you look at the very bottom of the envelope, it'll say other. Um, if you would like to bless Dave and help him and his finances to go to Ireland with Pastor Phil, please feel free to uh, provide some finances. There will be a, um, a little tray out back that you could uh, send some money or provide money today, or you could do it next week. Thank you very much. Yes, people have already been generous giving to the trip. Lori just gave me some returnables to take back the other day that I could use the money, and I spent about an hour and a half at Hannaford 
bag enough for turnables and everything. And, uh, and it also afforded me an opportunity to speak with Jack Cameron. Jack and Cece, who used to go to our church, gave me a call yesterday, wanted to send a little contribution. So it's, it's been a good way to connect with people. Uh, anyways, we are going to transition out of missions. Uh, as uh, Ferris talked about, we have that grandparenting seminar coming up. And uh, so we, Pastor Phil had just set a, a little time aside in the service here to consider that. So let's uh, start by singing in our hymn books um, or up on the screen, um, number 453, Happy Our Home When God Is There. Please stand, join me as we sing. Happy our home when God is there. Binding our hearts in love, blessing each day with moments shared, drawing our thoughts above. Happy our home when daily prayer bears every Pastor Phil had asked me to, um, to uh, share. He was just getting some stories to do with grandparenting. And uh, I, I was thinking about when he asked me about it, there were a couple things I, I, I thought about, which I'll share with you in a second. But uh, I was just thinking about how, as uh, followers of Jesus Christ, we're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. And I was thinking of that in terms of getting advice. And I was thinking of trying to think of actual like scenarios. And I thought, you know, if I was going to decide between like getting a Ford or a Chevy, I really wouldn't be too concerned with who I spoke to on that, whether it was someone, a fellow follower of Jesus from my church or someone that I had talk to at Norma's restaurant or down at the garage where we get done work done and it's a little bit rough around the edges down there. They like their beer toward the end of the day. You know, I, I really wouldn't worry about who I got that advice from, whether to get the Ford or a Chevy. But then I was thinking, on the other hand, if I was having, let's say, trouble in my marriage and maybe was considering, you know, should I get divorced or what should I do with that? That's the kind of thing that I really would want to go to a Christian brother or sister to get advice on. It's really important who you get advice from. And I had this verse out of Second um, Samuel in chapter 17, verse 14. And you've got to really listen because it's a little opposite of what you might think if you're not listening. So listen to this. Second Samuel 17, 14. Uh, Absalom... And all the men of Israel said, the advice of Hushai, the archite, is better than that of Ahithophel. For the Lord has determined to frustrate the good advice of Ahithophel in order to bring disaster on Absalom. So Absalom is getting advice from this guy Hushai the archite, and he, he likes the advice he's getting when in fact, it's not good advice. He should be listening to the other guy in the story. 
And it really illustrates in here, because we, we know that um, Absalom, kind of, he tends toward ruin in his life. And so it really illustrates that it's really important who we get our advice from. And I was thinking about that in terms now circling back around to kids and grandkids. You know, has anyone here, has your kids not listened to your advice? Or not even wanted to hear what you had to say? Right? You've all probably had that, exper that experience. And um, in, in my life, my, my dad and Peggy, my stepmom, have been a great support to Wendy and I um, because we've definitely been in this example. Sometimes we have kids who don't always want to listen to what we have to say. They're looking at me right now and giving me cross eyes. And the other one who isn't here today would be giving me the same look if he was here today. But uh, my dad and Peggy have been a great support with our kids because sometimes your kids just don't want to listen to what you have to say. But one thing my kids have done really, really well and I can praise them for is they've often gone to their grandparents and especially because they're boys, they'd go to my dad for advice. And my parents have been a real godly example to them, not only in the way they live, but what's been the most terrific for Wendy and I is that we know that sometimes when the kids don't want to listen to what we have to say, we can just let that go because we know they often seek out their granddad, their grandpa to get advice and we know that they're going to get wise advice that's based on God's word. So. Um, it's going to be good and godly advice. So that's been the blessing that uh, my dad and Peggy have been, is that sometimes we can let these things go and just sort of work them out, knowing that the kids will still get good advice. So anyways, that was my little story. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we're going to go to prayer here in just a second. Uh, I can't believe I had the... I had the to do the announcements, and I forgot to mention men's ministry. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Next Saturday, men's ministry, 8 o'clock, be here at B Square. Uh, and a follow up on the envelopes that there was mentioned. If you want to put all of that in the other, I'm sure the treasurer and the church chairman are just cringing right now. Just take it all, put it right in the other, and uh, the church will be just fine. Uh, we all have uh, we all have kids or family members not walking with not walking with the Lord. They may know the Lord and have turned their back or have never known the Lord. We'd like to take just a few minutes and get into groups and, and pray for those, uh, those family members that uh, I know my wife and I, it's heavy on our hearts. We pray for them daily. Uh, so we would just like to take a, a few minutes to pray for that. If you'd break into groups of three or four people, five, whatever it is, we'll take just a couple of minutes to, to pray for those loved ones that are not, are not walking with the Lord. Lord, our children are a blessing to us in many ways, yet our heart aches so often for those who are not, not walking with them. We just pray that you would uh, draw them back to you, have, their, have your Holy Spirit working in them, and give them ears to hear 
soften their hearts, Lord. Draw them back to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Daryl and Charles and John. We're going to continue our service this morning in prayer as we pray for uh, the prayer requests of our body. I've asked a few to come up and join me. So. Um, let's, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do just praise and thank you for this opportunity that we can bring requests before you and know that you care about those requests and you love on us like we sang earlier in our worship time. And Lord, uh, right now we just like to pray for Lydia hus Lydia's husband, uh, Scott's uncle Bob, who uh, and their family. Bob just passed away yesterday. And uh, Lord, we just wanna lift up this family to you. Pray for his wife, Eleanor, who, uh, also has some health, health issues she's dealing with. Lord, just uh, be with Eleanor. Comfort her with your spirit, Lord. Just uh, fill that void in her heart right now in, in the way that only you can do that. And, and Lord, I just I pray for Scott, too. And just in um, this time of life where uh, he sees an uncle passing away, Lord, just uh, help him to... to just use your spirit, Lord, to communicate with him and bring, draw him to you, Lord. I also want to lift up uh, a woman whose name uh, has been requested for prayer. Uh, Lord, this is a woman that uh, knows you as Lord and Savior, but is struggling with bitterness right now in her heart, Lord. And I just want to pray for her. Uh, Lord, just, uh, again, show your love to her and, and enable her to show mercy and grace in, in this situation in her life, Lord. Uh, I pray these things in your name. Amen. Uh, well, I did like to bring uh, Kim Perham's cousin, Steve, uh, which li he lives in Ohio. Uh, he has cancer, and it spread to his liver and his lungs both, Lord. We just pray for him that... Uh, we don't, I don't know if he knows you, Lord, but we pray, Lord, if he doesn't, that he would come to know you. We pray for the doctors, Lord, as they uh, uh, work, with it, work with him, and, and uh, we pray for pain management for him, Lord, that that would work. And uh, we just pray, Lord, that he would uh, just look to you at this uh, time of his life, Lord, and that uh, he would, uh, uh, we just pray that you would, the outcome, that, uh, whatever the outcome of this, Lord, we pray, Lord, that... Uh, a blessing would be uh, held there, Lord. And we pray for Kim, uh, Dick Perham's mom. Uh, she's in Portsmouth Hospital. Uh, she may have to have her gallbladder removed. We just pray for her, Lord, now that uh, you would be with the doctors as they make this decision. Uh, we pray for pain management for her too, Lord. And I understand that can be a really painful uh, problem that people have. So we just pray, Lord, that you would um, just be with her and draw close to her, Lord. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father in heaven, we uh, continue in prayer, and I want to begin with uh, praying for, I'm praying thanks, Lord, for your providence in uh, the timing of Cheryl's trip to see her parents in California. And Lord, it's been providential so far to um, help them with serious health conditions. And so I pray, Lord, um, for their health and that they would um, look to you for uh, rest during um, the evaluation of, of these diseases and, um, that are terminal in nature. And Lord, I pray that they would um, seek rest uh, for their soul, knowing that we are all mortal creatures this side of heaven. Lord, let them uh, find a place and a way to love you in, in their hearts like they've never loved you before and a way to trust you like never before. Um, Lord, we as a congregation, uh, we're going through winter right now, and I'm wearing these um, embarrassing glasses right now, God, because um, I'm trying to cheer up my soul a little bit. And uh, so, God, I just pray that you would cheer us uh, for any that are 
um, in need of sunshine, and um, thank you for the sunshine, Lord. Um, I pray you would give us sunshine in our hearts during a time of year when it's hard to be cheerful. Lord, thank you for your mercy with the sunshine. And uh, Lord, I um, lift up Andrew to you and um, his transition to Belize. I pray that he would be bringing a um, warmth and love and um, encouragement to Belize, especially the, the man who's um, recovering from the surgery. And um, Lord, I pray that Andrew would be that drink of fresh water uh, to Belize and that he would um, see a maturing and growth in the, um, the fellowship there and that they would advance your kingdom um, in their midst. And I pray... Pray the Lord. I pray, Lord, that um, baby Maxson's healing would, um, the liver transplant would uh, continue. Lord, have your hand on this baby um, that uh, is known to the Metcalfs. Lord, uh, show your great strength in their midst and help them to trust you like never before. Lord, I lift up David's uh, sister Cheryl to you as she is now leaving um, a son, I believe, in rehab in Milwaukee today. Lord, let there be progress towards Michael's health and uh, independence and healing. Work your purposes of peace and uh, wisdom in this young man. And finally, Lord, we give praise. We give uh, thanks to you that Joanne's mother is doing much better and that she is starting to use a walker. And she's taking a few steps, Lord. Thank you for those steps. Uh, continue to add strength to her body and progress in her health. It's for your namesake we pray. Lord, thank you for being a good, good father. And thank you for always being in control and, and forgiving us for anything. God, I just pray that um, whatever family matters are going on, Lord, that uh, this family would be able to look to you and put aside anything that is separating them from each other. God, you are always in control and you know what's best. Help help these individuals to let go of um, the things that are holding them back from uh, clearing the air and, and building their relationships. God, I pray that you would restore their relationships and... Um, Bring a closeness that they've never had before. God, I also pray for a successful liver surgery tomorrow um, for Donna's cousin. God, I, I also pray for peace for his wife who is full of anxiety about the situation. Lord, I just ask that you bring peace about there. And um, People struggle a lot with um, loved ones going through surgeries, Lord, no matter what what surgery or health issue, and you are able to bring that peace about. And I just pray that um, his wife and other family members are able to cling on to that peace and look to you to get rid of that anxiety, Lord, because we know from your word that worry produces nothing good, and you want us to trust in you fully. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, folks. Uh, when Phil is away, we bring people in, and, and this morning we are pleased to have Dave King here with us. He's been with us before. Uh, looking forward to the message that he has. Uh, I asked him if uh, how he would like, like me to introduce him, and he said, Dave King. Well, I've been here a few times. It's always a joy to serve you and Pastor Phil. And I love to come to this church. If I lived in this area, I'd probably visit here and maybe even attend. And uh, I looked under my pew. And you know what I found? Nothing. The janitors do great work here. I was going to say I found a big dust ball, but that would be lying, wouldn't it? 
we have uh, been in transition, my wife and I. I'm 77 and she's 39. Uh, I don't know how we've been married 55 years, but we have. <laughs> we have uh, five children married, and we have uh, 13 grandchildren, and we have 14, I don't know how many great-grandchildren, but there's a lot. And uh, we just, uh, are, we, are, we came home from, the, well, before we went to Ukraine, uh, we sold our home in Limerick that my son-in-law had wonderfully built for us and wouldn't take a dime for labor. And then we were able to sell that to, to go overseas. And when we, every time we came back, we lived with them for a period of time. And then when we moved back, he had a house that he uh, allowed for us to live in at reasonable rent, and then uh, we decided he decided to sell that, and so we moved into their big, gorgeous home in Hollis, and with a pond out front and a big lawn that he made me mow. <laughs> I'm a club cadet riding lawnmower. <laughs> and then they announced to us that they were selling the place, and they. They provided in an amazing way for us to move into a gorgeous condo in Gorham. Do you believe that? So we'll be taking an offering after the service for the homeowners association fee. <laughs> but no more mowing, no more shoveling, no more nothing. How many have that privilege? You're broke too. <laughs> um, it's a thrill to be here and to open the word of God to you. I'd like you to turn, if you would, to Romans chapter 1. And I don't know, two minutes of 10 now, are you done at 10? How long do I have? Uh, I know, till I'm done, right? But the coffee and donuts are waiting, the pastor said. Romans 1, and I'm going to just read from verse 11 to 17. Uh, let me set this up a little bit. Paul is writing to the Romans from Philippi, and uh, he's telling them that I've tried to get to you many, many times, but the Lord did not allow me to come. Of course, he ended up, sorry, he's in Rome, right? Yeah, Rome. And uh, the Lord wouldn't allow me to come. It's amazing how we make plans, but the Lord says, I don't want you to do that because we make our plans and the Lord directs our steps. As one dear pastor friend of mine said, we propose and God disposes. But he's writing to them about his passion for them and his love for them, and he's talking about their faith in Christ, that it's genuine that it's real, it's not religious, it's not works-oriented to please the flesh and people and try to earn our way to God. These guys were real, just like you, real Christians. And he says to them that in uh, verse 13, I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I plan many times to come to you but have been prevented from doing so until now, in order that I might have a harvest among you. A harvest. That's what we're all about. Harvesting. There are people in this town who are part of the harvest. Jesus says the fields are white unto harvest, but the workers are few. The real Christians are few. Those who aren't ashamed of Jesus are few. Those who aren't afraid to be rejected and ridiculed for the gospel are few. Now, I want to comfort you because not all of us are big mouths like me. And um, it's hard for us to preach to people. It's hard for us to walk up to people out of the blue and say, hey, how you doing? If you died right now, where would you go, heaven or hell? Oh, 
<coughs> How many have a very difficult time doing that? Yeah, my wife does, not me. And some of us are just quiet by nature. We have a hard time doing that. So do not be intimidated by this sermon. Those of you who have a difficult time being extroverts because you have other qualities that God has put in you. You have other ways that he uses you to spread a different style of proclaiming Jesus. So I just want to set this, set it straight uh, as we go into this because he says, I want us to have a harvest among you just as I have had among other Gentiles. Well, Paul would walk into a city, find all the intellectuals, walk right into the crowd and start preaching, didn't he? Yeah, what a guy. But he says this, and these are three motivations that I present to you for 2017. Three dynamic, goal-oriented, driven challenges for every real Christian. He says this in verse 14, I am obligated both to the Greeks and the non-Greeks, both to the wise and the foolish. That is why I'm so eager to preach the gospel also to you who are in Rome. I'm obligated to everyone to preach the gospel. Let's think about that for just a minute. Obligated. The same word in other translations says, I have a debt to pay to God for sending his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die for me. I've been asked several times this morning, how you doing? I like that. I was at home. I was at Lowe's the other day picking up something for this place that we got. My our son-in-law came over, laid all new tile floor, plank tile. Can you believe that? Perfect. Then he painted the whole living room. Then he put in new appliances for us. Glory to God. I think we God raised them right, didn't he? Yeah. You know what that says? Don't ever worry because God takes care of his servants. He takes care of us. Well, how are you going to pay for that condo? I don't really care. I know he will. I know he will. But listen to this. I was at Lowe's. I have so many rabbit trails. Anyway, I was at Lowe's, and here I come out of the men's room. That's what old guys do, you know. And... uh, I come out of the men's room, here's this guy down on his hands and knees working on the floor cleaner. He says, how you doing? I answered, better than I deserve. Me too. I come in here today and several people ask, how you doing? And I answered, better than I deserve. Oh yeah, me too. (laughs) You got to think about it. I've said that to people girls at the cash register or the guy at the pharmacy or whoever it is, I, how you doing? I say, better than I deserve. Oh, no, that's not true. Oh, yeah. This brother here, I told him, and he said, hmm, I don't know you that well, but, or maybe it was this fellow back here, and one of you guys did. Hey, where's that brother that gave the announcement about Ireland? Did he leave? Hey, you get your belt to hold your pants up. No, she forgot the belt. We're walking in the building. He's on his cell phone, cell phone and I thought he was talking this. Hey, how are you? Oh, hi, good. How are you? And he said somebody, don't forget to bring my belt. I looked down and he didn't have the belt on. Okay. Well, anyway, you probably don't deserve it. Uh. Obligated. We don't deserve 
to have our sins forgiven forever. All of us. Past, present, future. You are covered. You are covered. And atonement. Jesus Christ is our covering. God doesn't watch our sin. He watches the covering. Jesus covers us. But shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That's not our goal. Of course, we can't help it. We're not sinless, but in Christ, we just sin less, right? But we're all a bunch of dirty, rotten sinners. And every day, we're on our knees thanking God for his love, for the sacrifice of his son, for his suffering on the cross for us for leaving heaven and taking upon himself the form of flesh, for being ridiculed and rejected and beaten and dying on a cross for you and me, an awful, awful, terrible death, so that we would have hope, so that we would have someone to live for, so we would have someone living us in us in the form of the Holy Spirit to keep saying, you blew it again, admit wrong. You blew it again, you offended a brother or sister, call them up and say, I was wrong when I said what I said, did what I said. That's not normal behavior. But it's what God does for us and in us to reveal himself. I have a debt to pay that I will never be able to pay in this life and the next. And so the deal is just do your job. Just do your job. When we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ, as 1 Corinthians says, and we're at the Bema seat. Somebody call it, some people call it the judgment seat, but the more correct term is the Bema seat, not the seat of judgment for believers, the seat of reward. And the crowns are handed out after everything we did with the life he gave us, with the spiritual gifts he gave us, with the hope and forgiveness he gave us. What would you do with your life? And it's all piled before the son of the living God. And those works and things that we did as servants are struck by fire. And what was done that was all about me? And everything that was left as gold, silver, and precious stones. Oh man, I'm gonna scoop them up and put them in the bank. I'm going to wear the crowns five at a time. You'd be lucky if you had one. What are we going to do with that? We're going to take all of that, lay it at the feet of the Son of the living God, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, and say, thank you. Thank you. Without you, it would be nothing. It would all go up in smoke. We have an obligation to preach the gospel to those God has put in our lives at work, at home, at school, wherever we go, in Ireland, in Ukraine, in Russia, to preach the gospel. That's amazing. Now he says the second thing that we are motivated to do is be ready. Be ready. He says, verse 15, that is why I'm so eager because of what Christ did for me and I, I, I just can't do enough for him so I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm eager. Uh, interesting, nice thing happened. While we're moving, you know, you find stuff you forgot you ever had. (laughs) 
my daughter sets us both down. She's a big shot at Unum, so she's used to bossing people around. Sets us down. Mom and Dad, listen to me. You got a lot of stuff. Now, some of that stuff is going to goodwill. You're not taking it with you. And some of that stuff you can keep. Yes, dear. <laughs> so we're going through the stuff. And here's all this memorabilia from 55 years of living. That's actually only one tote. <laughs> we, we travel light. <laughs> so she hands me this plastic baggie with all of these uh, letters, big V's, gold V's, Vestal Central High School. And they were varsity letters that I had acquired somehow going through high school. I ran track, the 400 meter. Anybody do that? Hey, what was your time? Huh? That was 57. That was my time. <laughs> You're good. Hey, why don't you tell me? I'll tell you my strategy. Now I don't have time. I won every race but one in my senior year. And that's because this sophomore, he, the coach, he said that the coach said to him, you follow King. You do what King does because you're going to be next after him. So what's he do? He stays right on my heel. He's right behind me. And uh, I'd come around the final corner. I'd been moving up slowly. And on that final corner, I still had gas in my tank and everybody else was out. And I would just kick it in overdrive. And I'd blow by all those guys and finish first. So this guy decides that he's going to beat me. And we wore these little tiny track shoes. You know, nice stuff you had with little spikes in them. I mean, <laughs> you ever wear those? And cinder tracks. And he goes, starts pulling out as I did, and his toe caught the heel of my shoes. And I trip, and I go right on my elbows and my knees across the cinder track and end up right in front of my mother and my aunt. And they're yelling, get up, get up, get up. They scared the life of me. I jumped up and finished third. But I was ready. I was ready. I had a strategy. I worked hard to get in shape. You got to be ready. That's why we read our Bible. That's why we pray for strength. That's why we come to church, to be motivated and taught and convicted by the Spirit of God through the proclaiming of the word through your awesome pastors and teachers. So that when we get up in the morning and have three cups of coffee, we're ready. We're ready. We're ready to do business for Jesus. Amen? Are you ready? Well, then get ready and be ready. Finally, we see in verse 16, oh, by the way, each of these points, he's obligated to proclaim the gospel. He's ready to proclaim the gospel. You know what the gospel is? That Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15. It's about the love of God for John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. Will you stop beating up on people because they smoke, drink, 
shoot and run with the folks to do because they have struggles in their life they can't overcome, shut up and love them. Shut up and love them. Accept them as the Lord accepted you when you were a dirty, rotten sinner. They come from the pig, same pigsty we do. Amen? Yes. Yeah. The gospel. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. So verse 16. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Listen. Because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. First for the Jew, then for the Gentiles. For in the gospel is a righteousness from God a righteousness from God revealed. A righteousness of works. That is by faith from first to last, just as it is written. The righteous shall live by faith, and the live by and the life of faith is driven by gratitude. Gratitude to God. live by faith. So, we're not ashamed. Hmm. We're not afraid. We're bold to live for Jesus because he's taken away our guilt and shame. Hallelujah. I don't care how you used to live. I don't care how many people you slept with lived with. I don't care how many times you've been drunk, drugged, passed out, in jail, or beautifully righteous, self-righteous, got the right clothes, carry the big Bible, have the Bible on your iPhone, but don't know Jesus void of his joy and peace. doesn't matter. Now, you're different. He saved your soul. Not by something you did, for it's not by works of righteousness that we have done that he saved us, but according to his mercy. He washed us. Made us clean. For it is by grace we are saved through faith and not, not of ourselves. It's a gift of God. Not because of works that we have done. I love it. So, that's that gospel again, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Well, I could probably do a whole lot of things to make you feel guilty enough to feel ashamed, but I'm not going to do that. Remember, there are big vows like me, and there are sweet, beautiful, careful people like my wife. You share Christ in a different way. Unashamed. Do you know how we share Christ in an unashamed way, all of us? Romans 13, 7. Accept one another then, just as the Lord accepted you. We go around accepting people. Oh, you don't know what they are. I don't care. The Lord accepted me before I cared. I'm going to accept people. I'm going to invite them into my home. How do you know what they are? Now, my poor wife, it's a wonder she's not in depression all the time. I bring everybody home. Now, after 55 years, happy wife, happy life, I've calmed down. Okay? But that's not her style. Accept one another. We moved into this village crossing villas. Isn't that cool? I'm just an old preacher from Hollis. People say, well, what have you done? I've been a pastor for 53 years. Uh-oh. <laughs> but I love people. Like a couple of ladies came to see us yesterday. One brought a basket with bread and honey 
and salt and pepper, beautiful basket, welcomed us, had beautiful notes on it. I said, we're glad to be here, and I love people. She said, we need somebody to love people around here. I accept people. Secondly, we are to forgive one another as the Lord forgave us. Ain't nobody going to look down their nose at anybody. We've been forgiven forever. <laughs> now that's the way the Lord wants you to forgive. You know, when God forgives us, he gives us three promises. Remember those I told you once? You don't remember. You take notes, put them away, and never see them again. Number one, he promises to never bring our sin up to us again. Why? Because he separated us them as far from the east as from the west from us. He buried them in the deepest sea. And secondly, he promises to not remember them anymore. Now, God can't forget anything, but he chooses in his omnipotent to not remember. So when you ask God 4,000 times a day to forgive you, he says, will you get over it? Move on. I don't even know what you're talking about. I forgave you the first time. And every time you sin, it's just like the first time. You're done. You're forgiven. So we got to forgive each other that way. And finally, he says, I'll never tell anybody. I'll never tell anybody about you and your sin. Wow. That's forgiveness. So when God tells us in Ephesians 4.31 to forgive one another as I have forgiven you, that's exactly what I mean. No offense is to be kept for cannon fire in the future when you blow your mind and get angry. Nope. That's how, that's the best conflict resolution process on earth. Get over it. Move on. Because God does. Forgive us, the Lord forgave you. And the third thing, why am I saying all this, love? It's in the notes, but I forgot the notes. Anyway, love, this is a new command, Jesus said in John 13, 34, and 35. The new command. It cancels out the Ten Commandments. There are no rules for us in Jesus. One law. No more rules. Isn't that great, kids? No more rules. One law. Love one another as I have loved you. Now listen. This is for all of us, the big mouths and the little mouths. It is by this that all men will know that you belong to me. That you are my disciples. That's how we witness that's the strongest, most powerful message that we could ever take to people. After a while, people get sick of the big mouths, especially when they don't see them accepting, forgiving, and loving like he did. So, that's how you witness. That's how you're not ashamed of Jesus, because you can't stuff the light. It shines through those three things. And then when that happens, people at work come up to you and they ask this question. Why? Or what makes you so weird? You never blow up. Your desk is clean. Your work area is beautiful. You always have a smile on your face and joy is oozing out of you. And you're saying, this is an issue of false identity. You don't know me. Right, right, right. Isn't that true? Because inside, boy, our thoughts aren't so pretty, and uh, we're, our anger, anger is in there, and you do me right. No, 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 things we're thinking. But somehow, by the grace of God, he put a big cork in our mouths, and they see Jesus. In John 15, the fruit 
on the branches. You know whose fruit that is? His, not ours. Because we've been engrafted into the vine and he's our source of life and nourishment. <coughs> and he produces the fruit, not us. Boy, that's a twist on that passage, isn't it? And he doesn't go around cutting off branches that don't have fruit and burning them. That's impossible. We're saved forever. We're kept by the power of God. We're just branches. And you know what these branches do? They just hang there, accepting, forgiving, and loving. And he puts out the fruit, the evidence of his presence in our life. And then when see people ask, what makes you different? And then we're not ashamed. Somehow, by the grace of God, we're stuck. We have to answer. Well, I take GNC Mega Man. No. I guess you must see Jesus, because it's not me. Where'd you get him? at York Street Baptist Church. You want to come? There you go. You just preached the gospel <laughs> because the gospel was seen in your life. So I'm going to close. I'm done. Ooh, coffee time. Joan and I were privileged to be sent to Alaska by the Hollis Center Baptist Church in October for a month because one of our missionaries, my brother Dwayne, is the CEO and founder of Kingdom Air Corps. If you're a young person, want to learn how to fly, to learn to serve Jesus or fly corporate jets or corporate aircraft or become a servant of the living God in Russia or Burma for the Burma Rangers, he's got planes all over the place and he trains young men and women to fly and live by faith and serve Jesus. Well, my dear sister-in-law, our dear sister-in-law, passed away. And so the church sent us up there. And, you know, I, 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 my legs are weak. I can't cut trees anymore. I can't build buildings anymore. I can't dig holes anymore. It's wonderful. <laughs> and Because you walk on that compound, and it's like a forced labor camp. Oh, you go dig a hole. Oh, you cut a tree. You build a building. Woo! And I was delivered. But my brother says, David, I've got this young fella, a young Eskimo boy, 18 years old. His name is Devlin. And Devlin was suicidal up on the north slope in Anatovic Pass. My brother took me there once. And there's no roads in, no roads out. The young people, drugs, alcohol, they're committing suicide. It's a mess. And so this guy... My brother's been going up there for years, has a Bible camp with all these students that he has, and uh, gets kids, Eskimos, to come to the camp, give them the gospel, to get saved, he baptizes them. And he said, this kid, you know, I think he's been saved five times and baptized three. But anyway, he loves the Lord with what he's got and understands, and I want you to take him under your wing and mentor him. And he needs to, he's got a driver's permit, and he needs to get a license, so I want you to let him drive and ride with him. Okay. Windy mountain passes down to Palmer. Hello. So I do, because my life is the Lord's, and when he's done, he's done. Let's go. So we're going along, and this kid's obeying the speed limit. He's careful. We get down to Palmer. And we get his passport and all that fixed up. And then we, he said, I want to go over to the driver motor vehicle department. And they got a place to practice parallel parking. I said, drive away. So he goes over there. Boom, boom. Parallel parks that Equinox. Perfect. Perfect. Cautious. Stops for every stop line. No burning rubber. No cutting people off. No, none of the jerkism. Wasn't there. So we did that a couple times and uh, drove all the way down, drove around, drove back. And um, so I said to my brother, he's ready for his driver's license. What? My brother's been saying it all his life. What? You 
terrible. The kid's a gangster. He doesn't know. He's terrible. No. I'm telling you, he's a class A driver. He's better than you. I said he's ready for his exam. So my brother tried to hook him up down Palmer, and they were all booked up. But my brother lived in Glen Island. He'd been up there 35, 40 years. He knows everybody, every politician, Sarah Palin, Franklin Graham. He just buddies with all of them. So he calls up the person who used to run the motor vehicle division in Glen Allen and said, I need this kid to get a driver's appointment. Can you get one for him? Yeah. Friday morning, 9 30. Be there. Woo. It's an hour and a half drive up through the passes by glaciers and beautiful. So we get there a little early. I haven't even had my coffee yet. You know what it's like to have to get up and not have your coffee and do that? Well, it's Alaska. You can't find anything. So we needed some gas, so this kid pulls in the gas station, he said, I'm getting a Red Bull. I said, what's that? Well, it's kind of helped perk you up a little. I never had a Red Bull. I said, get me one. <laughs> so he comes out with two Red Bulls. <laughs> Pop the thing, go, 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 go. <laughs> Hello, hey, I have a Red Bull. Have you ever drank a Red Bull? Smart people, you guys all drink Red Bull, you know you don't. I'm proud of you. I know it's your buddy didn't raise his hand. That's why he wins all those races. Anyway, so we get up to a little motor vehicle shack. It's just a little mobile unit. And we walk up to the door, and I'm out on the side of that, right by the door, this little sign. In God we Trust, State of Alaska Motor Vehicle Division. What is this? Hello. So anyway, nothing. Must be a mistake or something. I don't know. So I walk in. He goes, there's this little short stick of dynamite blonde behind the counter. I mean, she got fire in her eyes. She's a perky lady. I go over and sit down and had a coffee pot. So I creed. It's almost coffee, but not quite. And get a cup of coffee, sit there, and she's taking care of him. And here's this little Eskimo kid with black hair sticking out, straight as an arrow. And, and here's a reserved, quiet pastor <laughs> with my chateau from Russia on the shaka, my jacket. Very respectful. She goes, what is this guy with this kid? Anyway, so they take off and um, doing the test. And while they're gone, I'm sitting there, there's quiet music playing. I said, is that a 50s song? No, no, no. That's a gospel music. Guitar, quiet, soothing. This is weird. State of Alaska, motor vehicle division, secular, leftist, no separation of church and state and every place else. Anyway, they're gone. They come, I, then I'm sitting there looking out the window and they come back to, there's a parallel parking place right there and he starts to parallel park, knocked over the cones, couldn't do it right, messed up. Now listen to this. This shows you how God works in mysterious ways as wonders to behold. I'm mentoring this kid, talking about God, talking about how we're to live, talking about what he has for us. And on the way up, I said, Devlin, you're being trained to be a servant of the living God. And my brother's taking you to Russia. He's teaching you to fly. God has plans for you, and that plan includes a driver's license, and you're going to pass your test today because this is about God, not about you. He always says this, yup. But when I said he went, yup. So how do I know? I took my grandson three times to Portland, and he flunked every time. I flunked twice, once. Anyway, my wife never flunks anything, but she'd sailed right through probably. Anyway, 
So they come back. I see them mess up. They come in the door, and I wanted to lighten the mood, but I was interested. I said to her, I really like your music. Do you love Jesus? See what I mean about the big mouth? Do you love Jesus? She says, you better believe I love Jesus, and I'm not ashamed of him. And I'll tell you something else. I'm voting for Trump, and I'm not ashamed of him. <laughs> this lady is not ashamed of anything or anybody. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes. Go get him. Am I supposed to do something else? Mm. Dave, you just have to answer one question. Everyone was just asking, did he pass? Yes! <laughs> All right. Oh, that's enough to do it. Here, listen. So I didn't know, but they were talking outside in the car. And this girl asked him, are you going to be living where you have to parallel park? <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, Eskimo village in Russia. She said, I can't parallel park either. <laughs> and she said, I was watching you out the window when you practiced. You did it. Now you blew the stop, and I told you to go around the circle once, and you went around twice. That's three, but I'm going to give you your license. <laughs> if you would, please stand, join me as we sing the last verse of Living for Jesus. Can we get to the last verse? Jesus through earth's little while, my dearest treasure, the light of his smile, seeking the lost ones he died to redeem, bringing the weary to find rest in Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee, for Thou in Thine atonement didst give Thyself for me. I own no other master, my heart shall be Thy throne, my life I give henceforth to for thee alone. Dick, you want to close our service? Okay, our benediction is going to come from Romans chapter 16, verse 25. Now to him who is able to establish you by my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all nations may believe and obey him. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen.